I predict now that his brain at autopsy will be found to be filled with neurofibrillary tangles. These are the twisting paratelical filaments that accumulate in neurons in the cerebral sulci of the brain, following repeated blows to the head that he probably acquired after just playing high school football. A three-page handwritten note in the shooter's wallet said CTE, chronic traumatic encephalopathy. Study my brain, please. I'm sorry. Tell them I'm sorry for everything. So did the shooter in Midtown, New York have CTE? What is CTE? Was he going crazy? What is happening to his brain following blows to the head playing high school football? If he stopped playing high school football, could he develop CT at a later age? All of these questions will be answered in the next few minutes on this video. In a world overflowing with headlines and confusion, truth matters. Meet Dr. Alan Snow, a world-renowned PhD neuropathologist, inventor and entrepreneur, an expert in brain aging and memory loss. This is one on one with Dr. Snow, where we cut through the noise and talk directly about your brain. Welcome to the world premiere of One on One with Dr. Snow. Today's episode is New York Shooter Had CTE. Today we're going to learn from a world renowned PhD neuropathologist who has studied CTE for over 20 years. In this video, you will learn what is most likely going on in the brain of the shooter. The accumulation of tangles in the sulci of the brain will lead to emotional outbursts, irrational behavior, end-of-life thoughts, and everything you have seen with this shooter and others. This has been documented in a number of published papers, mostly coming out of Doc Anne McKee's lab at Boston University. Remember, Dr. McKee fought the NFL showing autopsy brains from NFL players who developed CTE following years of receiving blows to the head and sub-concussions. I also have several videos on this channel, Dr. Snow Brain Health, reviewing CTE and what it does to your brain. A few days ago, 27-year-old Shane Devon Tamora walked into a building in Midtown, New York, carrying an assault rifle, killing four people including an off-duty New York officer, Didrol Islam. Tamora drove all the way from Las Vegas, Nevada to New York City, specifically looking for the NFL offices in that building. Tamora did end up shooting an NFL staffer, his name was Craig Clemente, at the NFL headquarters in Manhattan. He apparently ended up in the wrong set of elevators, that is Tamara, he was looking for the NFL offices, which was on multiple floors in that building, but he ended up on a different floor. Beyond this act of violence, which appeared to be very premeditated, obviously, if he drove all the way from Las Vegas to New York City without stopping, basically, it's amazing to me that they also found a handwritten note in his wallet where he said he believed he had CTE and they should study his brain to see what's really going on. In that note, he lashed out at the NFL and claimed he had CTE while mentioning Pittsburgh Steeler Terry Long, who ended up his life by drinking antifreeze and was later diagnosed with CTE. In the past, former NFL players like Junior Seihau of the San Diego Chargers and Dave Durson shot themselves in the chest to allow their brains to be studied after their deaths. This video is sponsored by Percepta and Percepta Sport, one of the world's most scientifically studied brain health and memory supplements, backed by over 20 years of research, 34 patents, and two major papers published in Nature Scientific Reports. Percepta Sport was used by the New England Patriots, including Tom Brady, when he was on the Patriots. Percepta and Percepta Sport consists of a proprietary, concentrated form of cat's claw, Uncaryotomatosa, and this is known as PTI 00703 cat's claw, and also the second ingredient is a specific oolong tea extract. PTI 00703 cat's claws derived directly from a medicinal plant found in the Amazon rainforest, 
whose bark powder is concentrated to five times to what is usually sold in stores. Percepta, Percepta Sport, and Percepta Professional are sold on Amazon.com, Walmart.com, and at PerceptaBrain.com. For further information or to receive a copy of the two major published papers in Nature Scientific Reports, please comment below in this video by sending us your email address. We will make sure to send you copies of those two papers. As a neuropathologist and brain aging researcher, I have personally studied CTE, chronic traumatic encephalopathy. I have been looking at the causation of tangle formation in the brain in Alzheimer's disease, different tauopathies, and CTE. Now, CTE is caused by repeated blows to the head. I have a number of different videos on my channel, Dr. Snow Brain Health, let's bring them up here to take a look at, pertaining to CT and exactly what happens to your brain following repeated blows to the head. Now this is seen in contact sports like football, hockey, soccer, skiing, rugby, boxing, wrestling, and a lot of different sports in which head trauma can occur. Shane Devon Tamora played football in high school for Granada Hills in California. There's even a video circulating on the internet where Shane Tamora being interviewed in the Granada Hills football uniform. Now this is not the first time that a football player likely receiving repeated blows to the head over a career of football or even just high school football ended up having emotional outbursts, irrational behavior, leading them ending their life or ending the life of other people. Confirmed CTE was diagnosed at autopsy in the following individuals as examples who played football for years. Let's start off with Mike Webster. He died at 52 years old. He had CTE after playing football for 25 years. He had behavioral mood disorders and cognitive loss. A paper was even published by Dr. Malu in 2005. And I want you to watch the movie Concussion in which Will Smith plays Dr. Umalu, who's a neuropathologist like myself, and he was the first to show that in the brain that football players who had erratic behavior ending up having tons of neurofibrillary tangles in the brain that's never been seen before. What about Terry Long? He was 45 years old when he was died with CTE at 45 years old after playing 14 years of football including eight years in the NFL. He had depression, erratic behavior, paranoia, memory loss, and Parkinson's symptoms. They found tangles, neuritic threads in many parts of his brain with no amyloid plaques. Now remember in Alzheimer's disease you have both plaques and tangles in the brain. In CTE it's mostly tangles, but it's in a different area of the brain. In Alzheimer's it's in the hippocampus and cerebral cortex, in CTE, it's in the actual sulci, the grooves of the brain. Tom McHale died at age 45 from an overdose. He played nine years in the NFL as a lineman. He had depression, memory problems, irritability. John Grimsley died from a gunshot wound at age 45. He only played nine years in the NFL, retired at age 32. So get this, I mean, think about it. Retired at age 32, yet he shot himself at age 45. So that's 13 years later, suggesting that CTE can accumulate and get worse and worse as you get older, even if you stop playing football. John Grimsley had short-term memory problems, attention, concentration, deficits, judgment problems, multitasking difficulties. By the way, all these symptoms that's after talking to the family, talking to the girlfriend, talking to the fiance. They all know the behavioral disturbances that occurred and they have it all documented. You can see a lot of this in Dr. Ann McKee's published papers. Aaron Hernandez, tau tangles found throughout his brain. He had stage three CTE. There are four stages to CT. We'll talk about it in a bit. And Aaron Hernandez had severe frontal lobe involvement. Junior Sehau, Played in the NFL for 20 seasons, originally with the San Diego Chargers. Seau ended his life by shooting himself in the chest in 2012 at young age of 43. In an initial study from Dr. Ann McKee's group at Boston University, out of 349 brains evaluated at autopsy from football players, 
77.6% had confirmed CTE with their brains filled with tangles. So what is the neuropathology of CTE? Neurofibrillary tangles, the same as seen in Alzheimer's disease but in a different location. In CTE, it's inside neurons of the cerebral sulci, which are the grooves at the surface of the brain. The tau protein is phosphorylated and can be picked up with an antibody against the tau protein. You could also use a silver stain to easily visualize all the tangles accumulating in the CTE brain. So what is the staging of CTE? Dr. Anne McKee and her team at Boston University has set four different stages to CTE, going from a few tangles found in the brain at autopsy, that's stage one, to many tangles found in the brain at autopsy in the cerebral sulci, that's stage four. So it goes from stage one to four. Now a big question is, could Shane Tamora get CTE after only playing high school football? I mean, is that possible? And the answer is yes, definitely. He could only have a few years of repeated blows to the head, and that could lead to CTE later in life, even if he stopped playing football after high school. So that's a big question answered. Can tau tangles actually be formed in a cell culture dish? And can you use that to identify inhibitors and disruptors of tau tangles? And the answer is yes. In our 2019 paper, we showed that paired helical filaments identical to those seen in CTE and Alzheimer's disease can be formed in a dish following tau protein induction by the glycosaminoglycan called heparin. What are the clinical signs of CTE? And they are confusion, impaired judgment, impulse control problems, aggression, depression, memory loss, anxiety, end of life thoughts, progressive dementia, and even Parkinson's-like symptoms. Is CT diagnosed in living people? Good question. The answer is no. The brain autopsy is needed to stain for neurofibrillary tangles in the brain tissue using antibodies to the tau protein and the silver stain to see the tangles. Will there be a future test to see tangles in live football players? And I predicted this in my previous video about a year ago that I believe in the next five years they're going to be able to see tangles in live football players using some form of imaging. Now right now you can use PET which is positron emission tomography to actually see brain plaques and tangles in live Alzheimer's disease patients. Now that research took over 20 years to finally figure out how to see plaques and tangles in the brains of live patients. I believe it will take another five years or so to get proper imaging techniques to bring life to the football field to analyze players to see the degree of tangles in their brain in lifetime. It will be interesting to see if the NFL is going to allow such technology to be used in their NFL games. Now I got to give kudos to the NFL because they've already changed the helmets that the players use in practice and now in real games. We also made a video on the types of helmets that the NFL has brought into the league to help their players ward off concussions and repeated blows to the head, hopefully warding off CTE. I'm Dr. Alan Snow and this is Dr. Snow Brain Health. This is one on one with Dr. Snow. Dr. Snow Brain Health is the fastest growing brain health channel on YouTube. Please subscribe to our channel. Thanks again for listening.